So eye tracking is a method to estimate where someone looks or how the eye moves. In this video, you can see a person performing an everyday task, washing his hands and making a cup of tea. This person wears two cameras mounted on a pair of glasses, one filming the scene in front of him and one filming the eyes. The green circle indicates where this person looks and the eye is seen in the upper left corner. By tracking the eye movements, we can get a good idea of how the visual behavior is related to motor actions such as hand movements. For example, when reaching for the kettle, you first look at it. A key insight that eye tracking brings is that where you look is tightly linked in time to the evolution of the task. Very few irrelevant areas are looked at. Eye trackers come in many forms. So you have head-mounted eye trackers like the one on the previous slide. And we have eye trackers mounted directly underneath the screens. And we have eye trackers mounted in VR headsets, for example. All modern eye trackers work in similar way. You have a video camera. You have some type of illumination. You take a picture of the eye. It looks something like this. In this picture, you identify where the pupil and the cornea reflection is. That is the reflection of the illumination of the cornea. Once you know the position of the pupil and the cornea reflection in the eye image, you can map this to objects in the external world. So one reason eye track is, in, is interesting is because there is a tight link between what is looked at and what is cognitively processed in the brain. This was formulated by Justin Carpenter in 1980 as the strong eye-mind hypothesis. This makes eye tracking interesting for researchers in, for example, psychology and cognitive science, since, it's, since it offers a direct window to the brain. Another example is gaming, where a gaze can be used as an input device to control events on the screen. In this example, a person plays the breakout game and controls the paddle at the bottom of the screen with his eyes instead of the computer mouse. As long as the person keeps looking at the ball, the paddle will always be in the correct location. Due to the di direct link between eye movements and the brain, eye tracking is also used in a clinical setting to diagnose neurological disorders. Reading has a long history in eye movement research. Here is what the eye movements look like when a person reads. The blue dot reflects where a person looks. As can be seen, reading is a mix of short stops called fixations and quick movements called saccades. The fixations are represented by the circles, while larger circles means longer stops. Saccades are represented by the lines. So reading is a very specific task and a good example of where the strong eye-mind hypothesis works. Here, eye movement parameters such as fixation durations are directly related to online measures of cognitive processing. This means, for example, that a longer fixation on a word can be interpreted as requiring more processing. An outstanding question in reading research has been how much of the text around the fixation do you need without interrupting normal reading? Can you, for example, fixate at the red dot and magically read all the information from the text as some speed readers claim? Or is it rather the case that you can only read a small portion of the text around the current fixation point? This question was asked by McConkie and Rayner in the 1970s. To investigate this question, they used a novel methodology known as a gaze continuant window. The gaze continuant window works like this. When you fixate the word, only this word and the word, words next to it are displayed to the participants, while other words are replaced by X's. When you move your gaze, the text is updated accordingly. Here is an example of what this looks like on a computer screen. While the participant can read the text without any problems, and even may not see that anything is strange with the text, the gaze continuum manipulation is obvious to a bystander. Rayner and colleagues concluded that readers generally need 16 characters around the point of fixation 
to be able to read at a normal reading rate. Such a situation is encircled in red. As a consequence, one needs to look almost directly at the word to be able to read it. To summarize, eye tracking is a tool that estimates where someone looks or how the eye moves. It's used in a wide variety of research fields. Specifically, it has taught us a lot about the reading process.